In this Maya tutorial for beginners, I'm going to show you how to model a simple block that has a 90 degree cutout and has a hole in the middle. This will all be able to have nice edge flow geometry and work with smoothing enabled. The first thing we need to do is from our polygon modeling shelf, click a square polygon. We can zoom in. Then in the attribute editor, we're going to give this polygon some dimensions. If I click on polycube one, I have options for dimensions. I can type three, 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 and now I have a three unit by three unit by three unit cube. In Autodesk Maya, centimeters is the default unit. So this is really three centimeters by three centimeters by three centimeters. Now, if you notice, the grid is going halfway through my object. I can fix this by clicking on P cube one and changing the translation. I know that it's in the middle and it's three units high, so I can translate in the Z direction by 1.5. Now my cube is snapped onto the grid. I can rename my cube by selecting the outliner, double clicking on P cube one and typing block. Notice that over in the attribute editor, it changes as well. I have block and block shape. The rest are parts of the history. I'm going to close the outliner by clicking on this icon, then click on the modeling toolkit tab. If you don't see the modeling toolkit tab, it's up here at the top with the little hammer. You can click on it there. With it selected in object mode, I'm going to select Add divisions. This adds one more division all the way around the cube. I'm going to press Q to deselect. Then I'm going to press F11 for face mode. I'm going to shift click these two faces, press Control E or Command E to extrude and pull it out. If I look at the attribute editor, I can type in a precise value of 3.5. Now I have these pulled out, but I need to add some more edge loops around this section of the geometry. To do that, I'm going to shift right click and select multi-cut. Press and hold control to bring up the edge loop tool within multi-cut. It can be difficult to position, but if you press and hold the center mouse button, it'll snap to the center. So then I can put in these multi-cut edge loops by holding the center mouse button and snapping to the center. Then I'll press F11 to get back to face mode. But notice I still have the multi-cut tool. That's because you have to deselect it. To deselect the multi-cut tool, press Q and now I'm back to my selection arrow. I'm going to press and hold the tab key to paint selection, then shift right click to go to circularize components. I'm going to use the default settings and then press control E or command E to extrude and then extrude downwards. I'll rotate around on my camera, continue to extrude downwards until it pokes through the bottom. Then I can select extract. I can click this icon on the top or shift right click and then extract faces. Press F8 to go back to object mode, off click, then click this center object and press delete. Click the object again, then we're gonna press F11 to go back to face mode. Shift click or paint select these four faces, shift right click to circularize components. We can go straight to extract by clicking the extract icon, press F8 to go back to object mode, off click, Click this piece, then press delete. Click the object again, press F10 to get to edge mode, rotate around so you can see the edges. Double click the edge loop, then press W to move. Watch what happens if I press the V key. You see how this shape turns to a circle? If I press and hold the V key before moving, then I can snap to these vertices. Now it is all snapped together. Press F9 to go to vertex mode and double click. Now all the vertexes are selected. Shift right click, merge vertices, merge vertices. Now this is all one object. I can rotate around to the top. If I press three to go to smooth mode, this is okay, but it's pretty deformed and doesn't look great. What I need to do is add some edge loops. Let's add some edge loops around the rings first. I need to select the top ring and the bottom ring. I could go through and select each edge, but it's easier if I go into face mode by pressing F11, clicking one face, then double clicking the face next to it. Now I have all of these faces selected in a ring. I can convert this selection by going to select, convert selection to edge perimeter. Now I have the edges of the perimeter on the top and the edges of the perimeter on the bottom selected. I can shift right click, bevel edge. I wanna turn off the chamfer, that way the geometry stays the same, 
And then in the attribute editor, I'll slide over the fraction so it's much closer. Now, if I press Q to deselect and then three for smoothing, notice that my ring now keeps nice geometry. I need to do the same for the rest of the shape. Press one to go back to polygon mode. Currently, I'm in edge mode, but if you're not, you can press F9 to get to edge mode. I'm going to double click all these edges. I'm gonna press and hold shift while I double click to make a larger selection. I'm gonna go around all of the edges and we wanna make sure that we get these edges too so we have good edge flow. I can orbit around, then press and hold the shift key again to make sure I'm getting a group selection of everything. Orbit around, don't forget the edges in the back. Now that I have everything selected, I can shift right click bevel edge. Once again, I'm gonna turn off the chamfer. Then I'll bring in the fraction so it's nice and small. Press Q to deselect, and this looks pretty good. If I turn on three, everything flows very well. But if I turn on one for polygon mode, and you look at these edge loops, these aren't very straight. So I wanna be able to straighten them out. How can I straighten them? An easy way is to press F9 for vertex mode. Click one vertex on an edge loop, then hold the shift key and double click on the one next to it. This selects all the vertices around that edge loop. Press R for scale, Look at the way that it's bent. This one is bent up and down. So I can simply scale down to zero in that direction and everything is straight. Press the Q key to select, then select this vertex, hold shift, double click, press R for scale, and this time I will scale them down to zero this way. Press Q to select, select this vertex and this vertex, press R to scale, scale it down to zero. Now all these are straight. I only have one more line of bent vertices. Press Q, click, hold shift, double click, press R to scale, and then scale down. Now all these vertexes are straight. Press Q to get back to the arrow tool. Now if I rotate around and I press three, everything is much straighter. I can press F10 to go to edge mode, press one to go back to polygon mode, and I can see if anything isn't in the right place. These all look pretty even. So now I have this nice polygon that if I press three, go to object mode F8, off click, this polygon looks nice. It has nice solid edges and everything flows well around. You can tell that it has good edge flow because if you go to edge mode by pressing F11 and I shift click this edge and this one, that flow goes all the way around. The same happens if I double click here. This goes all the way around. If I click this one and this one, that goes all the way around and the same thing happens here. This is what we want. We want to be able to have edges that are easy to select all the way around the model. So try to use these basic modeling techniques to model this block with a 90 degree cutout and a hole in the middle in Autodesk Maya. This way you can move on to more complex models once you've mastered these techniques.